Shalom and welcome to Hebrew with Maim. This video will be going over the Torah portion, Vayakhel, He Assembled, which is found in Exodus chapter 35, verse 1 to 38, verse 20. And um, this is a picture of, or it's a model, actually not a real picture, but it's a model of the Mishkan, the tabernacle that was built. And I'll just read the, the English first. For the first verse, it says, Exodus chapter 35, verse 1, Moshe called the whole community of the children of Israel to assemble, and he said to them, these are the things that the Lord commanded to make. So the first letter of the first word is a vav, and this is a patak, so this says va, and this is a yud with a patak, so this says ya, so this is va ya, and this is a kuf, and the shiva is actually silent, it often is in the middle of the word, so it's part of this syllable right here, so this is yak, va yak. And this is a, um, a hey with its sere, which says he, and with the lamed, it says hel, vayak hel. And this word means, and he assembled. And this is a mem with a cholem, and this, the cholem says o, so this is mo. And this is a shin, this cholem also indicates that um, that the shin is a shin instead of a sin. So the, this dot is doing double duty. And so this is a shin and this is a segol, which says e, eh, and this he is silent. So this will be just she. So mo she. And um, okay, this is uh, Moses. Um, in English and Hebrew, it's Moshe. And this is an aleph of the segol, which says e, eh, and this is a tav. So together it says et, et. This is a di direct object pointer. There's usually no translation for this in, into the English. This is a kaf, and this kamatz, usually in modern Hebrew, says a. Ah, but um, in ancient Hebrew, it said o. Oh, and with this word, um, that o, oh, like as an aw, o, oh, that o. Oh, sound is preserved. So we're going to say ko, and this is a lamid, which makes an L sound. So we'll say kol, kol, et kol. And this means um, entire or all or whole. Sometimes it means each or every. So um, here we can translate it as the entire or entire. Let me see what the English, oh, in, in the, this version, which is from Chabad, it says whole. So the whole or the entire. Okay, and this ain with the the chatef patach says a, ah, so it says a, ah. and there's a dalid with a patach, and the tav at the end, which says da, dat, a dat, a dat is congregation, okay, or assembly, okay. So Moshe assembled the entire, the whole congregation, okay. Vayachel Moshe et kol adat. And this is a bet with, with a shiva, which says be. And this is a nun that said in the yud together say ne, bene. This is sons of or children of. Kol adat bene. And then um, this is a yud with a chirik, so this says yi. And then this is a sin, this shiva is silent, so it'll be part of this syllable, so it's yis. This is a resh with a kamatz, ra. And this is a aleph with a sigil, which says e. And this lamed is part of this syllable, so it's el. Yisrael. Yisrael. And of course, that's Israel in English. So, Vaikhel Moshe, et kol adat b'nei Yisrael. And Moshe assembled the whole congregation of the sons of Israel. And then we have um, another va sound here. Va. And this is a yud with a cholem, which is o. So this is yo, va, yo. The Aleph is sent, so it's part of the O sense so of Vayo. This is a mem with a sigil and a resh which says Mer, Mer, Vayomer. Vayomer um, means, and he said, okay, and he said. And this is an Aleph with a Chatapatak which says A, and this is a Lamed with a sigil which says Le, Ale. And this is a hey with a sigil and the mem together, 
will say hem. The sugo says eh. So alehem. Vayomer alehem. And he said to them, alehem is to, the, the aleph lamed is to, and then the, the he with the mem, so feet, means them, to them. And he said to them, um, and then we have an aleph with a seder which says e, eh, and a lamed with a sugo, and the he together says le, ele, ele, um, which means these, okay, these. There's an implied R, the word R here. And then um, this is a he with a patak, which says ha, which means the. This prefix means the. And this is a dalid with a shava, which says de, ha, de. And this is a vet with a kamatz, which says va. And this is a resh with a chirik, and the yud and the mem together say rim, ha, de, va, rim. Hadevarim means um, the words or the things or the matters. So um, words, word or words is really not the best translation for devarim, but it's uh, but it often makes sense to translate it that way. But it doesn't it doesn't mean like one word. Like devar is not one word. It means an idea that is represent. It's more like an idea that's represented. That's rep presented by a word rather than a single word. Um, words in Hebrew is mil'im. So this is hadevarim, the, the words or the things, okay? So these are the things. Let me see how the English translates it again. These are the things. Okay, yes, it's, it tr translated devarim as these are the thing, things, <laughs> the things. Okay, hadevarim. And we have an aleph for the patak which says a. And we have a shin with the segol and the reish together, say sh which says sher, asher. And um, this is, um, this means that which or who. And um, uh, let me see how the English they tr translate it as that, okay? It can mean that which or who. And then we have a sari with a chidi, which is si. And this vav with a, with a dot through it, um, the shuruk is usually an an u sound, but because it has a vowel also here, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pronounce it like a vav with a v sound. With this kamatz, which says a, ah, and the hey together, we'll say va. So siva, that commanded siva ashet siva, and this is yod he vav he, the sacred name, and we just say adonai. So that adonai commanded, okay. And then we have a lamed with a patak which says la, and we have an ayin with a patak which says a, and then we have a sin, and then this dot is going to do double duty again. It'll be cholem also, so it'll be so, la a so, and then the tav closes the syllable out sot, la a sot, which means to do or to make. Let me see how it's translated here. It, 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 here it's it, they translate it as to make. Okay, and then we have an aleph with a cholem, which is o, and then a tav with a kamatz, and the mem sofit says tam, o tam. This means them, okay? So it's not actually transla translated here, probably because it's not really needed in the English, but it's literally there in the Hebrew. La soto tam, to make them. Okay. Next verse. Um, six days work may be done, but on the seventh day, you shall have sanctity, a day of complete rest to the Lord. Whoever performs work thereon on this day shall be put to death. Okay. So um, Rashi, uh, commenting on this verse, says, he, meaning Moshe, prefaced the discussion of the, the details of the work of the Mishkan with the warning to keep the Sabbath, denoting that it... The work of the Mishkan does not supersede the Sabbath. So we have here the idea that Hashem is trying to convey that his Shabbat is more holy than even the Beit HaMikdash, the, the Holy Temple, which is a very interesting thing. The Holy Temple is destroyed, but Shabbat still remains with us, which is a beautiful thing. Shabbat... The, the sanctuary of time, the cathedral of time, um, is something that 
No man can destroy. No man can take away. We have this holiness wherever, this holy Shabbat, this holy holy sanctuary in time, no matter where we go, no matter who we are, all we have to do is cease from our labors. Okay. So here is the Hebrew. For this verse, this is a shin with a tzeres, this is she, and this is a shin with, with a sugal, and it's almost the same sound, a little bit shorter, sh, this is she, and this is a tav, which is, um, which closes the syllable out, shet. She shet, she shet, she shet means six, um, shesh is actually six, sheshet is kind of like six of, or something like that. Um, so, um, we have the yud here with a kamatz, which says ya, yeah. and then the the mem with a kirik, which says me, and the mem sofit closes that syllable out to say mim, yamim. Ya, uh, yom is day, yamim is days, so six days. And then we have a tav with its set which says te, and this um, ayn with the kamat says a, te, a, and this is a sin with the sego, and the hit and says se, te, a, se, which means you shall do. So six days you shall do. Then we have a, a mem with a shava, which says me, and a lamed with a kamat, which, which says la. Me la, and then we have a cha for the kamats in the head, and which says cha, me la cha. So six days you shall do work. That's what me la cha means. And um, this is a, a vav with a dot through it, which says u. This is a shuruk and says u. And this is a vet with a patak which says va, so u va. And this is a yud, and this vav with a, with a dot on top is a cholam, so it says o, oh, so this is yo, and the mem sofit closes it out, so it's yom, uva yom. And on the day, that's what it means, u means and, va means on the, and then yom is day, and on the day. And this is a he with a patak, which says ha, and this is a shin with a shiva, which says she, ha she. And this is a vet with a chirik, which is v, together with that, that, that yud, it will say v, hasha v, and this, this, this ayin with a chirik will also say e again, e, v, e, hasha v, e, and this means, the ha means the, and she, v, e is seventh, okay, and on the day, the seventh, or on the seventh day is how do we, we would translate it in English. So on the seventh day, and this is um, this this looks like the sacred name, but it's not. It's a little bit different. Instead of a vav, there's a yud right here, but this is certainly related to the sacred name. Okay, the first two letters are the same two letters because the sacred name is made up of of um, of words, um, um, which mean which talk about the eternal nature of Hashem. And so this is a yud with a chidig, which says yi. And this shiva is going to be silent, so it's yi. And this is a yud with a sigo, which is ye. And this is also silent, yi ye. Yi ye should be translated as here as there shall be or it shall be. On the seventh day, it shall be. It can also be translated depending on context as he shall be. Okay, but we'll, we'll translate it as there shall be. Okay, there shall be. And then we have a lamed with a kamatz, which says la, and then a chaf with a segol, which says che, and then a mem sofit says chem, lachem. This is, means two, la is two, chem is them. So on the seventh day, there shall be to them, ye lachem, and this is a kuf with a cholam, which says ko, and a dalad with a segol, which is de, and the shin closes it out, so it's desh. Kodesh, Kodesh, which means holy. So we we would translate this as a holy, a holy, because I know that this is an adjective for this uh, noun right here, a holy. 
And this is the shin of the patach, which says sha, and a bet of the patach and the tav at the end, which says bat, shabbat, which is, of course, Sabbath, a holy Sabbath. There shall be to them a holy Sabbath. And on the seventh day, there shall be to them a holy Sabbath. And this is a shin of the patach, which says sha, and a bet with the kamatz, which is ba, and the, the tav with the cholem says to, and this is a noon sofit, so it says ton, shabbaton, shabbaton. So it's it's almost a, a re repetition of Shabbat, Shabbaton. So Shabbat, Shabbaton, this repetition, it means a Shabbat of Shabbats. And there's only two days that, that the Torah calls a Shabbat, Shabbaton like this. One is the seventh day of the week, the seventh day Shabbat. And the other holy day that's also called a Shabbat, Shabbaton, is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. So on both of these days, what is very similar is that no work shall be done and no fire shall be lit and no, no cooking shall be done. So on the other holy days, such as the, that are, the, they're, 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 not, they're not actually called Shabbats in the Torah, although later in, in Jewish literature, they, it is called a Shabbat. But in the Torah, the, the other holy days are actually not called a Shabbat. Um, because um, even though there is a cessation of regular work, ordinary work, there are still certain things that you can do um, on on the non Shabbat Shabbatons on the regular on the regular. I'll just call them Shabbat holy days, such as the first and last day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Matzah. It's okay to cook or prepare food, um, as well as on the first first and last uh, first day of Sukkot and the last great day and also Shavuot you can you can prepare food on those days but on the on the Shabbat and and on um, Yom Kippur you, you're not supposed to prepare food and no fires should be lit which we'll read later okay Shabbat Shabbaton okay and then we have um, La right here Lama with a with a with a uh, patak says la, which means to the, and this is the sacred name. So we're going to say Adonai la, la donai, la donai. We'll say it that way. Okay, and this is um, kol. We had this word before already. Kol is all, and this says um, this is a hey with a kamatz, which says ha, and this is um, this is this ayin with cholam says o, oh, and this is a sin with a sego which says se. This hey san so kol haose, which means um, that do work or one uh, one who does work. So this expression is all any or anyone who does work, who does any work, and this is a vet with a cholam and the. Sorry, this is a vet, with, and this is a vav of the cholem above it. So this is also vo, which means the vet means in, the o means it. Okay, in it. Kol ha'ose vo, anyone who does any work in it, okay, on it, meaning on that day, on the, on the Shabbat day. Um, so anyone who does on it, and this is a mem, and this is a shiva, which is me, and this is a lamed with a kamatz, which means la, which says la. This aleph was part of that, so me la, and this is a cha for the kamatz, and the hey together will say cha, me la cha. So this is the one that's translated work. So all who do on it work, me la cha. Um, and then this is a yud with a, with um, a, um, Above with a dot through it, which is a shuruk. This is you. And then um, this is a mem with a kamatz, which is ma and the tav, mat. You mat. And that's translated as shall die, basically, or shall be put to death. Okay. And the last verse we'll do is Exodus chapter 35, verse 3. The English says, You shall not kindle fire in any of your dwelling places on the Sabbath day. That's what I was talking about earlier. And this is why Orthodox Jews do not drive on Shabbat. We don't light any fires. 
um, because of this verse right here. Okay, um, so this is a lamid with a cholem. So this is o. So this is lo. Okay, and this this negates the next word. So this is you might say no or not. Okay, lo means no or not. And this is a tav with a shavu which says te. And this is a vet with a kamatz which says va. And this ayin with a chetapatak says a. So teva a. And this is a resh with this. Um, this is a shuruk. So we'll say ru. The vav with the dot through it says u. Teva a ru, which means you shall kindle. So not you shall kindle. You shall not kindle. <laughs> okay. So you shall not kindle. And this is an aleph with a with its it says e and with the shin it says esh. Esh means fire. So you shall not kindle fire. Lo tevaru esh. And this is a bet with a shavar which says be and this is a chaf with a cholem which is ho and the lamid says La, so chol, bechol, which the be means in, and, and this it also sometimes means at or with, but the, here you can, we, we're going to translate it as in, and this is this is the same word chol, which means all. Um, it's actually the same word that we've had a few times already um, here. Uh, it's, this is pronounced kol, but it's the same exact word uh, meaning, um, so it's just... Um, Sometimes it's pronounced differently. Um, I think it's a style. It's just a style issue. It depends on what what words surround it. Okay. Um, so, bechol, uh, or what words or what letters surround it? Bechol. Um, so this is in all, and this is a mem with a, and this is a shin with a, with the cholem. So this is mo. And and this shin, this shiva, I mean, is going to be silent. So it's mosh, mosh, um, mosh. And then this is a vet. Um, wait, hold on. No, this this is not this is not silent. This is going to be pronounced. I'm sorry. Um, after a holim, the shiva is pronounced. So this is moshe, moshe, and this is a um. A vet with the cholem again. It says this vo, moshe vo, and this is a tav with it with its set. So it says te, moshe vo te, and this is a che, uh, chaf with a sego and the mem so it says chem mosh. So quickly, you just say moshe vo te chem, but I th but technically this should be sound moshe vo te chem. And this means you're in all your dwellings. Sorry, sorry, your dwellings. <laughs> the chem part means your or y'all's. It's actually plural. Your y'all's dwellings. So bechol is in all. Moshevote chem is your dwellings. And this is a bet with a shiva, which is bit. And this is the word yom again, which we've had already um, earlier. So beyom on the day. And this is. Uh, uh, the ha, and we've had this word already again. Also, Shabbat on the day Shabbat on the sh on the Sabbath day. Okay. All right. Now we're going to learn the trope for this, and um, I'm just going to review the cantillation marks because this is you have to memorize this in order if you really want to learn trope. So I'll just review it with every video. So this says Kadma. Munak zarka, munak sego, munak, munak revi, ma pak pashta, munak katon, zakif kado, merhati pra, munak ebnakta, paze, telisha ketana. Telisha Gedula Kadma Vyazla Azla Geresh Gershaim Darga Tevir Yetiv 
verse 6 of Pasuk. So I was pointing to the trope marks as I was singing them. Now these ones are very rare that I'm about to do. Okay, they only happen a few times in the Torah, each one. Shashelet karne para Merha kefula ha 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 Yerach ben yomo Okay, so the trout marks um, tell you not only the sound of each word, but also the accent mark um, for, the, for the word, where the, which syllable is accented. So here we see the accent is under hell. This munach is under hell, so it's vayak hell. It's not vayak hell, it's vayak hell. Okay, and this is Moshe. Because that this trope mark right here, it's not Moshe, which a lot of people um, in America who speak English say when they're not speaking exact, you know, Hebrew. Maybe they'll just throw in the the Hebrew version of Moses. They'll say Moshe, but in Hebrew, it's really Moshe. Um, it so here, there's only one trope, trope mark. It's um, with a syllable dot, so it's adat. It's called adat, and then ne. In bene is what's accented, bene, and then el here's the the last syllable of Yisrael is what is accented Yisrael. It's not in English we accent the first syllable we say Israel, but in Hebrew it's Yisrael. There's also a guttural stop right after ra and before el because the aleph is actually a guttural stop. Yisrael. Okay. And this is Vayomer, not Vayomer, but Vayomer, because the trope mark is right here. And Alehem, this is the trope mark, okay? So on and so forth. So these trope marks will tell you where the accent mark of each of, of the word is, okay? Okay. And I'm going to trope each, um, each, each, each symbol, and then also... Uh, um, trope it with the Hebrew. I'll trope the name of the trope mark and then I'll trope the Hebrew, okay? So, this is Muna, and so this is Vayakhel Revi'i Moshe So this is Vayakhel Moshe and this is um, this will all be this trope mark right here. Okay, so this is Tevir, so this is Et Kol Adat, and this is Mercha B'nai, Mercha B'nai, and this is Tibcha Yisrael, Tibcha Yisrael, and this is Munach, so this is Vayomer, and this is um, Ednachta, so this is Alehem, and this is um, Mapach Ele. So we cut off the first few notes because um, the, all of the trope is three notes. This word only has two syllables, so we just cut off the first note. So, Mapach Ele Katon Hadevarim Mercha Ashet Siva Tibcha Adonai Mercha Laasot O Um Sof pasuk otam. Okay, another thing that tr the trump marks do is in it, it indicates grammatically um, where the pauses are, so you know which which words are are grouped together. So they you, they they're kind of like commas and and dashes and periods. You can't directly say one is a comma or one. So it could just be a pause. We wouldn't you know translate each. Each separator is necessarily a comma, but we do know that when there's a separator, 
um, it, it, it will group certain words together. So the Revi is a separator. So Vaichel Moshe or, Moshe or Moshe assembled is one thought, one phrase. Okay, Tavir is another separator. So Et Kol Adat is one thought or phrase. So this is the whole congregation. And then B'nai Yisrael is, um, is, is another thought, but the actual stop is, um, this is the actual, um, you would actually put a, a comma here, vay, after Vayomer Alehem, and said to them, okay? Um, and then you would put a, a comma after this separator, okay? Um, ele, these are hadevarim, the words. And here, this is another separator, this katon. So these are the words, okay? And then we have asher tziva adonai, that Hashem commanded. And then la asot otam is, is the last phrase, which is to do them. Okay. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and um, trope the whole verse. Vayakhel Moshe et kol adat b'nei Yisrael vayomer alehem ele hadevarim asher tziva Adonai la'asot otam. I'd like to invite you to visit my web website at www.hebrewmime.com that's h-e-b-r-e-w-m-a-y-i-m.com and you can click on the button to sign up for free lessons free hebrew lessons to your email delivered every week or so sometimes i miss a week sometimes i'll send more than one email for that week so again just visit my website hebrewmime.com and um, I also have special sections here. Um, not only can you sign up for free Hebrew lessons to your email, but you can also get my playlist to learn the Aleph Bet, even Aleph Bet with Elmo. And we also, ha I also have a section on um, learning various Jewish prayers and blessings. Um, I also have um, you can get see all of the Hebrew lessons from Genesis to Deuteronomy. And what else? Oh, I have a section on ancient Hebrew. Learn how to pronounce um, the Hebrew letters in the ancient Hebrew pronunciation, the ancient Hebrew tongue. I have some lessons on how to trope or chant the Torah, specifically lessons for that. And, um, and then I also um, have links to, links to, if you're interested in getting more formal biblical Hebrew lessons or modern Hebrew lessons from um, a good friend in, in Israel. So you can check that out as well. So just visit my website at hebrewmime.com. Shalom. Shalom, my name is Maim, and I'm a naturopathic herbalist and holistic life coach. And I'm the founder of the Aruka Holistic Life Academy. Our students learn how to become effective healers using nutrition, herbs, and other holistic healing methods. I have found that to become a holistic healer, you, number one, don't need to be licensed. Although some of our students are medical professionals, doctors, nurses, etc., but you don't need a medical degree or a license to become a holistic healer. Number two, you don't need to study for four or more years in college. And number three, you don't need hundreds of thousands of dollars for a, metal for a medical degree or a nutrition degree or any other kind of expensive degree. I don't have any of these things, yet I have built a profitable online health coaching business. And I'll tell you the eight things, though, that I have found that you do need. Without these eight things, healers are ineffective and lack confidence in being a holistic healer. And most holistic schools and certification programs don't incorporate all eight of these secrets, which is why many graduate from them, from nutrition schools or health coaching schools or herbalist schools, etc., feeling inadequate as a healer. So 
I would like to share you share with you my secrets on how I became an effective holistic healer and built a profitable online health coaching business. You can become the healer of your home and your community without the need for pharmaceutical drugs with dangerous side effects, hospitals, doctors, or even dentists. You can build a profitable online health coaching business without the need for years of college for an expensive degree. My mission is to show you how. Visit my website at www.aruka.com slash free to get my eight secrets on how to become an effective holistic healer.